Neil Lazarus here and welcome to another posting. Events in the last week are, have taken a dramatic turn uh, between Israel and the Palestinians. Um, in the light of the breaking of or the blowing up of the border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt. Let's take a step back uh, and just remember how the events uh, first manifested. First of all, we saw uh, a barrage of missiles coming from the Gaza Strip into Israel, including uh, the city of Sterot. Uh, and what we've seen is Israel trying to stop, both by military pressure and economic pressure, those missiles coming across. I remind you, we've seen something in the last 10 days of amount of something like 300 missiles landing uh, in Israel, fired by the Hamas government. Israel's blockade, as we mentioned, was dramatically broken when uh, Hamas blows up the border with the uh, Egyptians at Rafiach, and as we all saw on television, what is up to today, 500,000 uh, Palestinians come across the border and go back again, and we seem to have a chaos and an open border without much uh, control. What's important uh, is to see slightly the longer term of uh, uh, events and the longer implications. We are seeing today perhaps the creation of a three-state solution to take even more uh, a definite role. Um, I've always argued that we are seeing the emergence of Hamasistan, Palestine and Israel being created, a three-state solution. The only alternative to that today, by the way, would be a uh, two-state solution controlled by Hamas. The question is whether Abu Mazen or Mahmoud Abbas can keep control of the West Bank. But what we are seeing with the opening of that border in uh, Rafiach is the uh, emergence of uh, uh, a new border or new entity called Hamasistan, which by the way is as problematic to uh, Egypt as it has, is Israel. I remind you, Hamas is the Palestinian branch of Hamasistan. Uh, sorry, the Palestinian branch of uh, the Islamic Brotherhood. The Islamic Brotherhood is a radical Sunni group based in Egypt. So Hamas for Egypt is as problematic as it is for us. Again, Egypt will not take on Hamas in any very in any meaningful and forceful manner. I remind you, we may see attempts to close the border, but that border will be reopened. They already had a second hole being blown into the. Uh, uh, in the border and I don't see today Hamas uh, agreeing to have that border closed. It may be the case that the Palestinian Authority will take re-control of that border uh, as they were meant to before the uh, military coup of the Hamas government. But what is clear is that the Gaza Strip is taking on a new entity which is pulling in Egyptian uh, controlled areas starting to threaten both Egypt and Israel uh, and becoming a base for radical Islam and uh, radicalization of uh, the Palestinian society. It is a, a challenge. The events of the last week are a challenge both to Egypt, to Israel, and I would argue the Palestinian society itself. All of this happening three days, four days, before the Winograd Commission comes out. And with the Winograd Commission, we are going to see an earthquake of political flurry in Israel. Uh, because the question will be, where does the buck stop? couple of scenarios. I remind you that Lieberman has left the government, bringing down um, Ahud Olmert's majority to 68. The two weakest links you have to look for, one, Shas. Shas has said, if you, Ahud Olmert, start talking with the Palestinians under the auspices of an American peace deal, talk about Jerusalem, we're leaving. That brings Olmert's coalition under the magic number of 61. Remember, there's 120 seats in the Knesset. You have to have 61 as a majority. Two, there's another problem, which is the Labour Party. The Labour Party itself is also threatening uh, to leave. Keep an eye out. Ahud Barak doesn't want to leave. Ahud Barak has seen the opinion polls, which shows that if there are elections today, Benjamin Netanyahu will come back. The Likud would be back. They would win the next election. So Barack isn't running to bring down the government. What you may see is something else, which is that the uh, Ahud Barak turn around and say to the Kadima party, replace your leader. And already we're starting to see some interesting sounds in the uh, foreign ministry because the person who would re replace Ahud Almut is 
Kadima's uh, foreign minister, Tsipi Livni. Nothing else happening here in the Middle East. A quiet place, a bit like Australia. But that's more or less what's happening right now. Keep watching the news, keep involved, because the essence of Zionism is that Jewish history is being made in the newspapers of Israel. And what we've been talking about over the last few weeks and the last few months is very much Jewish history in the making. And it's that, by the way, as we move to the 60th year, uh, 60 years of anniversary, is the reflection I want to leave you with. The essence of Israel is that Jews are making their own history, making their own destiny, making their own future, and perhaps even making their own mistakes. But that's the essence of Zionism in the real world today. Comment, let me know what you think. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.